drive to Wendy's and order a single, you get more beef than the Whopper or the Big Mac. Where's the beef? At Wendy's, you never have to ask, where's the beef? Where's the beef? Isn't that a classic commercial, friends? Don't you feel old watching that commercial? Uh, one of the top commercials from 1984, it has really proven to be prophetic. And I don't know, have you, do you remember this commercial where the elderly lady was showing that her hamburger, it had a whole lot more meat on it than the competitors? The competitors, they were compensating by using larger hamburger buns and uh, so she really got her point across in a whole series of very entertaining commercials. Now today I want to run through a few news stories and show you how history is always repeating itself. And there truly is nothing new under the sun. And the Lord again is going to get the attention of the world through the appetites of everyone under the sun. So first I want to start off by reading a passage from Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 3 to show how the Lord works. He humbled you, causing you to hunger and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your ancestors had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God or proceeds from the mouth of God. And that is a slam dunk verse of God, how he disciplines his people through their stomachs. And it's also a great verse to those who will not submit to God through fasting. Now, I wanna take a look at this article. And again, you're gonna be saying this phrase at the end of the video, where's the beef? Where's the beef? Uh, meat shortages leave some Wendy's without hamburgers. Now this article is a couple years old, but it's, it's a fresh article and it will probably recycle again in a few months. Remember this story, it came out of Dublin, Ohio when the coronavirus pandemic at first hit. Some supply chains could not satisfy the demands for meat and there were production issues and some meat processing plants had to temporarily close because hundreds of workers tested positive for the coronavirus. An estimated 4,900 workers tested positive and there were about 20 deaths. And those numbers are not official numbers. Those are only estimates. So friends, look for more of these types of headlines in the days to come because the globalists are just getting started on collapsing our food supply so that they can start their apocalyptic hunger games. They are working in secret and they mock those of us who are connecting the dots and following the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And more food disparity is coming in the days ahead. And they will collapse everything through weather events, through fires, through manipulation of the markets and, and uh, natural resources and through war. So you can follow it in the headlines just like we do here. You can, you can see in the headlines, oh, there's a, there's a forest fire here. It always happens this time of the year because the temperatures are hot. And there's a forest fire here and there's a forest fire here. And basically the entire community goes into economic collapse. There's sabotage and then there's mocking of those people who don't believe the agenda and they do that with these very super aggressive fact-checking uh, fact campaigns. So I'm so very glad that my Heavenly Father is on the throne. Now let's take a look at this next article. It says, Bill Gates says, let them eat fake meat. Yes, he wants us to eat fake meat, friends. Um, this is a article that is from a response from the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. And it's a, it's a letter, an opinion article written about Bill Gates' push for synthetic meat for the wealthiest of nations. Bill Gates was quoted saying that wealthy nations should switch to synthetic beef because of greenhouse emissions. Colin Woodall has finally released an official response in this opinion ad. And he writes that tech billionaire Bill Gates continues to tout the consumption of synthetic beef in rich countries as a solution to climate change. There's that 
phrase again, climate change. It's all about the climate. And that's nice for the billionaires of the world, he wrote, but his recommendation ignores reality. Beef production in the United States is sustainable and becoming increasingly so over time. Today, just 2% of the total U.S. greenhouse emissions come from beef cattle production. That's far less than sectors such as the energy production or transportation, which produce a combined 54% of U.S. greenhouse gas emissions, according to the U.S. EPA. Woodall goes on to say that Gates should focus his time and energy and endless wealth on reducing emissions from energy and transportation sectors. Anybody say amen to that? He says that Gates chooses to focus on beef production because he is heavily invested in the same fake meat companies he's promoting. According to this article, Gates has even gone so far, and this should be very concerning to you, friends, Gates has even gone so far as to claim that the government needs to step in and make a government mandate to get consumers to eat their dose of fake meat. Worse yet, the fake meat that Gates promotes is heavily processed, high in sodium, and more expensive than real beef. It solves none of the nutritional problems facing consumers. Fake meat also falls on the experimental front. Recent studies show the true impact of fake meat production is far greater than Gates might be willing to admit. It requires massive amounts of electricity to incubate incubate, wow, incubate the product in the lab. And these same companies that claim to be bettering the planet are often sending large quantities of plastic and other materials to landfills as a byproduct of this manufacturing process. I'm still stuck on uh, incubator, aren't you? Fake meat and those who sell it aren't interested in solving climate problems. He goes on to say that Gates and the companies that promote fake meat are simply another group of corporate interests chasing profitability. Greed, 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 friends. So friends, the next time you hear Bill Gates or his uh, disciples recommend an expensive imitation of beef, uh, the author of this uh, opinion article says, ask yourself, who benefits most from such suggestions? So friends, I want to ask you, what do you think is going on here? Uh, them pushing fake meat on you. The globalists are trying to create a game out of watching people suffer. And they even create movies about it too. Have you seen The Hunger Games? It was out years ago. These people, they hate God. They hate the Holy Bible that clearly has all the answers. And there's going to be a famine of the word of God coming too. That's what the Bible says. But one thing that blesses me through all these articles is that the promises of God are always true. He is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he says, it will truly come to pass. So in the good times and in the bad the Lord Jesus Christ will be with his people. He's parted the Red Sea. He can multiply food. He can heal the broken heart. He is the answer for every situation that we have in these last days. No matter what orchestrated chaos the globalists come up with, the Lord Jesus Christ has the solution for his people. So I wanna ask you, have you placed your full trust in the Lord Jesus Christ today, friends? Do you know him as your savior? And are you spending quiet time with him, reading his word more so than listening to others? Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. And I want to encourage you today to make him and him alone the most important thing in your lives. All right, friends, we'll see you again real soon.